morning, church. You guys ready to worship Jesus together? Well, I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise. Treasures that fade are never enough. You came along, then you came along. You put me back together. Now every desire is now satisfied. Here in your love, we'll sing. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Well, I know it's true. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid.
name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Praise you, Lord.
hear your people sing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Isn't this a fun morning in church? Notice anything different? <laughs> that was amazing. It was so awesome. It's so awesome um, to bring up other people and myself uh, in, in part of this worship experience. You know, when, when you're... Um, when you're up there, it's the same as when you're down here. But for me, I'm so much more focused. You know, when I'm over here, I've got all the, I'm looking at the kids. I'm like, shh, shh, you know, like I'm like so distracted. When I'm up there, I'm like, hey, you guys have the kids. I don't <laughs> care what's going on. <laughs> and I should do that when I'm over there too. Because <laughs> really, it's just such a beautiful time of worship this morning. It's been so nice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is with us everywhere we go. Thank you, God, that you've given the gift of your spirit just to, to be in us and with us. And we just thank you so much, God. We just ask for you to just flood us even more this morning. Open our hearts. Lord, any walls that we might have up, Lord, I just ask that you would break them down and we would just, just be so moved by you today, Lord God that whatever area in our lives you want to speak to, you want to touch, you want to change, God, you want to um, build up, we just ask that we would be open to it. That's the key, guys. It's on us. He's here. You know, it's on us to open our hearts this morning and just to be there. So I have some announcements to make. Um, we have our regular things happening. Tuesday night we have Bible study. Friday night we have youth group, Fusion Youth. From now on it's going to be in the barn because it's getting cold out. So it's awesome. And uh, Saturday, the 21st, third Saturday of every month, w ladies, we're going to be getting together. So the third Saturday, which is the 18th, we're going to be together over at the barn. It's going to be awesome. And this morning, I have something to show you. Here, I'm going to use this. Um, we're going to be, it's the holiday season. So it is, um, it's a season of giving, right? You know, we've got Thanksgiving, we've got Christmas, we have so many opportunities to give. Pastor Ray is going to be sharing about some, and I'm going to be sharing about a few this morning, but there's always an opportunity to give. No matter, like, what, what you have, there's always something that can be given, right? Whether it's a dollar or whatever, you know? So this morning I'm sharing about Operation Christmas Child, which a couple of you have seen what's in the back and said, oh, I've done this before, I love this. Um, Op Samaritan's Purse has a program called Operation Christmas Child that they get these shoe boxes, and have people get a shoe box and fill it with needs for little kids, toys, toys, needs, fun things, and maybe even a letter. And it, they're shipped around the world to thousands and thousands of kids. And it's amazing seeing the work that they've done and the, the tons of people, Franklin Graham, is um, the founder of, I guess, Samaritan's Purse, but definitely the founder of this Operation Christmas Child, and it's amazing. So on the back table, we have a couple different um, little flyers that you can take for more information. It tells you what to pack in the boxes. It tells you what to bring. Now, what we want to do is over the next two Sundays and at our women's group, if you're coming to that, um, you can bring your shoe boxes there to us or you can bring the things that are on this list. If you're saying, I, I don't have a shoebox, I don't want to go get a shoebox, you know, like, I can't figure this out. It's not hard. There are all these little things that if you bring them, we can put them together in the shoeboxes that we have. And it's going to be such a great opportunity just to, to bless people, right? And it's, so that's um, over the next few weeks. See me after church. I can explain it more. I'm not going to take up all your time this morning explaining how it works. But it's going to be really good. Um, this morning is Communion Sunday. Pastor Ray's going to come. You guys are going to have an amazing morning in church today. Kids, let's head downstairs and be so wonderful for your teachers.
Let's give it up for the choir one more time. <laughs> Choir, you were awesome. Where's Robin? Robin, you were especially awesome today. Yeah. Come on. Amen. With that backing choir and everything. Man, we could have listened all day, right? Hallelujah. So good. Love worship. God loves worship. He loves when we worship. And worship is expressing his worth to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Love communion. We're going to celebrate. I'd like to pass out the uh, communion elements. We're going to do this first thing. Communion is uh, it's, it's a, a great thing. There are two aspects of communion. There's the joy of the benefits we receive. Amen? When we partake of, of Holy Communion, we're, we're acknowledging the Lord's death until he comes, but he is, and we just re realize, wow, I've been forgiven of all my sins. You know, he doesn't partially forgive us. It's not like, well, I'm really not that good a person, and uh, so I don't know that, you know, this is really going to take for me the way it does for others. That's just wrong thinking. God loves us. He knows everything about us, and when we come to him, he casts our sins into a sea of forgetfulness. He says, I don't remember them anymore. They're gone. They're gone. I heard somebody one time say, you know, you come to the Lord and you're confessing a sin you've already confessed years ago, but it just bothers you that you did it. And you start confessing to the Lord and the Lord says, what are you talking about? That's a cool thought, right? It's gone. You don't have to confess it again. You just have to confess the things that you're doing currently. <laughs> <coughs> and that's probably on a daily basis. There's something I know I... Uh, uh, find where my mind can go. But I, I do like this, that there's times that I get down on myself for something and, uh, and I sense the Lord saying, oh, no, no, there was nothing wrong with that at all. You know, you ever hear the Lord tell you that? You know? and, and it's just nice to know that he's there, he loves us, he'll give you a pat on the back, and uh, amen. So the one aspect of communion, I mean, there's the joy of the benefits we receive, uh, but there's also the sacrifice that was made. I think we're prone to uh, go to the benefit side of it. Oh, this is so great. I love that my sins are forgiven. But when we stop to consider what Jesus did, uh, when we stop to consider the pain Father felt, Almighty God felt when his son knew you're going to have to go, son. Sins need to be forgiven. And God knew it right from the beginning. We've touched upon this, and it's worth rehearsing all the time. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> it's worth thinking back and realizing God said he created us in his image and to be perfect. He knew we would sin. He knew Adam and Eve, what they were going to do. And it wasn't like it doesn't matter to God. Like, well, he knows the end from the beginning. It didn't surprise him, so how could it hurt him? Because he's all love. He's perfect. And it did hurt him. And he paid the price. And he, let's just have the scenario where he says to the son, you're going to have to take care of this because only a man can die for the sins, a perfect man can die for the sins because, like, we couldn't pay the price for one another's sins, right? Because it needed to be a perfect sacrifice 
And I'm not perfect, so I couldn't, I'll lay down my life. It's not good enough. It's got to be perfect. It had to be the Son of God. So the eternal Son of God became a man and willingly gave up his life. And it was painful for the Lord. I was just talking to somebody I, I met at the hospital, and uh, <coughs> and uh, he was a Christian, and and uh, we were talking about it. He says he thinks that the the most painful thing and and he says was carrying the guilt of all the millions billions of people in the world jesus paid the price for sins past present and future so the weight of those sins upon him considered uh, uh, it was the sins of the whole world from beginning to end and he says i think that was what hurt him so badly. And I said, you know what I think it was? I think it was that moment when he said, uh, <coughs> Father, uh, he says, uh, why have you forsaken me? That he had to become sin, so the Father had to say, you're, you're condemned for the sins of the world. Now, I, do not, I don't believe, I just want to say this, there are different thoughts about it. I don't believe he went into hell to be punished for sins. It was the death. You know, in the day you sin, you'll surely die. He died, and he died to sin. He died, but he preached to those in captivity. It was a whole different story, and he rose from the dead in victory, and it was finished. Amen. Let's say that. It was finished. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. But that moment, just the thought there, that the loving Son of God uh, is feeling, I, I'm separate. The, the emptiness, that empty feeling of aloneness, of condemnation, of just feeling, carrying the weight of sin. It's a horrible thought, amen? This is the other side of communion. This is the side we stop to think about, that when we partake of these cute little cups with the, the little bread, that, we, uh, <coughs> that we, we meditate on it. We thank him for what he's done for us, but we also pause to think about, you know, how, how horrible, how horrible it was. Amen? There's a balance there. There's a balance in looking at it, but we certainly, we want to hang on to the glorious part of us being forgiven and to know that. But this morning, I do want to dig into, as I get into my message, get into this other aspect of some of the weight of responsibility for things that, are, that, that we need to help with. Amen? Hallelujah. Give you a couple of scriptures here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, it says, For I received, this is the Apostle Paul that wrote this. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that's what we're going to do. In the same way, he also took the cup uh, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this dr uh, bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. Let's open up. It's always harder when you're doing it up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we come before you this morning. We're so grateful for what you've done for us. You're the bread of life. 
And Lord, we just, we thank you for your broken body, which was broken for us. We thank you, Lord, that you, you did this in obedience to Father, but of your own volition, your own desire to participate in this, that we might be set free from sin and death and experience your presence. And so we receive this bread right now in memory of what you've done for us. Your body was broken. Let's partake together. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much. Hallelujah. I've already read that on the night that they took the cup. And so, Lord, we bless this cup. We bless what these elements have done, what you've done for us to grant us forgiveness of sin, to grant us eternal life. And so we receive this right now, and, and we're thankful. We say, we yield ourselves to you. We say, we want to walk in obedience, and even as we partake, if there's any problems that anyone has here, that this act of obedience would release the realization of the forgiveness of sin, but also the call to live in relationship with you and do the things you've called us to do in Jesus' name. Let's partake together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's offer up some praise a little bit here, just in your own words. Lord, thank you. Love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. You're worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. You're worthy of our praise. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. And the angels cried, Holy angels Holy, then high, holy, holy forever. Keep going, Lindsay. People sing, holy of kings, holy. Always be holy, holy forever. We sing to you, Lord. Mm -hmm. sing. Holy, all creation cries. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever, hear your people sing. Big finish, come on. Holy to the King of kings, holy, you alone will be holy. Holy forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We've been talking about and, uh, messages on on personal accountability, on, on, on serving the Lord and, and being witnesses, being conscious of what's going on around us. Amen? For us to uh, take responsibility, like things that people say. You know, we don't look to argue with people or anything like that, but if something comes up and there's 
an opportunity to speak the truth in love, that's what we do. Amen? That's what we're to do. We're to, we're to participate in the divine nature by, by touching people's lives around us. have been talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. God coming in and touching us. He's the one that empowers us. We had a, a <clears throat> great studies that we're having on Tuesday nights. And I encourage you, if you've not been out, come on out. Uh, Jonathan Davey is doing an amazing job in, in bringing forth uh, the word. In, uh, <clears throat> and, that's, uh, and, and so come out. You've got to be equipped. You, you have to be equipped. In order to do things, you can feel like, ah, I, I can't do that. We talk ourselves down. I, I, can't, I can't do that. I'm no, I'm no public speaker. You don't have to be a public speaker to go up to the, the window to get your food and say what you need. <laughs> you don't need to be. We communicate all the time. So whatever happens, you hear somebody, if they're saying something wrong or something like that, and, and something happens inside, you say, you know what? Let me just address that. But we speak the truth in love. Never to put somebody down. How stupid. You know, not that. But we want to, we want to step up to the plate and, and be witnesses. Jesus said to be my witnesses. You know, it's funny that the word witness, uh, uh, in the Greek, it's uh, martyrs. It's martyr. <laughs> you know. So get ready when you become a witness, you know, that we're witnessing, we're testifying. But there is, there's a sense in which there's a death to self when, when you're stepping out and saying something that, that can feel uncomfortable. I, I, I don't know enough. What if they ask me a question? You know, I found that the best thing to say when you don't know the answer is just, hmm, not a clue. Don't know but I'll tell you what I do know. Amen? So you speak what you know, you confess what you don't know, and, and then we move uh, in relationship with people. Because everybody's the same out there. People are going through the same kinds of things. Today we're seeing, uh, we're seeing things like we've never seen them before. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 16, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. They do what the cross was. It wasn't like, oh, really? That's awesome, you know? No. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Guess what? That applies today. He wants us to take up our cross. What's our cross? It's his cross. It's just being people that love other people and are willing to help bail them out when they're in trouble. And people are in trouble. People are in real trouble. And then he says, For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. These are powerful words of Scripture. Amen? For what will it profit a man if he gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Wow. That's, we could just, that's a sea law moment. Just thinking about that, <laughs> right? Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And they did see that because Jesus, he died, but then he rose from the dead. They saw the kingdom of God manifested in the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I wanted to uh, have, uh, I've got a number of scriptures here to, 
to encourage us. I've been talking about how uh, there are tough times, and we need to know that we don't worry about tough times. Amen? God is our provider. When you're looking at, I mean, we just got to notice uh, <clears throat> that our, what is it called? Our pastor. <laughs> <laughs> See how passionately she said that? You've got to be kidding me. We just paid more last year. Than well, get used to it. Amen? Get used to it. More and more is going to happen. But the thing is, we have, God is our provider. We need to put our trust in the one who says that I'll, I'll take care of your needs. If we're feeling like, I can't do this. i, I got to stop paying my tithe. Because if I keep doing that, I, I won't have the money. Well, you'll find out that doesn't work, you know. Give and it shall be given to you. Amen. That's what he tells us. We trust the Lord. Test me in this, the Lord says. I talked about that a few weeks ago. But, and it's not to like, I had someone one time <clears throat> that uh, the husband was not a believer. Said to the wife, I hear him talking about giving. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's what, you know, we need to do that. He goes, did the church need money at that time? You know, like, the reason you're saying it, well, hey, I got to, we got to get some cash here. So, you know, and it was, uh, it really affected me when the guy said that. I felt like I, you know, it just made me feel icky all over, you know, like, because that was not my purpose at all, you know, and we don't do that here but we say but the Lord says in his word test me in this you know but he also says he's our provider like I'm not gonna I'm not worried about uh, I don't steal I don't lie and I'm going to and I give and I'm going to do that regardless of what uh, what comes amen but I'm trusting that not regardless I'm saying Lord I'm asking you for this and we ask him Ask the Lord. You need help? Ask the Lord. <clears throat> Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. Are you the righteousness of God? Amen. In Christ. It's not our own righteousness. It's his righteousness. It's called an imputed righteousness. His righteousness becomes my righteousness because I've put my trust in him. And he says, his life is now my life. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will be revealed with him in glory. Christ is our life. We can hold our head up high. Amen. Hallelujah. Light dawns. Uh, what? I'm on verse 7. Okay, I'm going to go to verse 6. I like this. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversaries. Isn't that cool? That we're the ones, we are, well, there's another scripture I have somewhere. We're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Glory. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. The wicked man sees it and is angry. He gnashes his teeth and melts away. The desire of the wicked will perish. Hallelujah. Isaiah 26. You can write these down. Verse 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. 
Trust in the Lord for Lord. Is that me? Is that the? It just died out. Let me try that again. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. Hallelujah. I love that. Perfect peace. Are you experience? Are you experiencing perfect peace? If not, go to that psalm. Say, hey, this sounds like a promise to me. I want that. Lord, I'm standing on your word. You said you'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Well, I'm, tr I'm putting my trust in you. And if it doesn't happen that day, you say, I don't care that it didn't happen today. It's going to happen because what God promises, he keeps his promises. Amen? Psalm 118. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. These are good scriptures, aren't they? I love the Word of God. And when, when you love the Word and you trust God and you trust in His Word, that's why these, these are promises. Sometimes when you feel like, ah, I, I just don't know what to do. Now, I'm not a dive bomber, you know, like, Lord, give me a word and you open your Bible, and, you know. So uh, I'd rather you just read the Bible and when something grabs your heart, either underline it, you're allowed underlining in your Bible, it's not a sacrilege. But if you don't want to do it, write it on a piece of paper and save up those notes. And then when things, hard times come, you start, oh, let me pull out those scriptures. Those were good scriptures. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. Isn't that good? I love that word, radiant. Is my face radiant this morning? I don't know. Let's, not, let's move on. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Say all his troubles. That's a good word. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him <coughs> and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord. And that fear the Lord, it's not with knees knocking and, oh, God, he's, he's so big. No. Fear is absolute reverence for God. It, it's just standing in awe of who he is. That's, that's what the fear of the Lord is. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. And that word saints, set apart ones. It's really what it means. It's not like, you know, you got a candle in front of you and uh, a flame over your head or something. You're set apart. When you come to the Lord, he sets you apart as his own. And uh, for those who fear have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Hallelujah. These are good, right? I'm glad you like them because I have more. Psalm 27 the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. There's more to this scripture, but isn't that great? This is what we do. We, we open up our hearts to the Lord. 
we meditate on these things. These are good ones to write down because we get hit. You know, say, hey, wait a minute. I'm, I'm sensing fear. I'm, why am I fearful? Because we're looking in the wrong direction. You say, wait a minute. I, I'm not allowed being fearful. I come against that fear in the name of Jesus. I stand upon the Word of God. God keeps His Word. He, he never lies. He's, he makes promises and He keeps them. For He will hide me in His shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of His tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in His tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says, your face, Lord, I do seek. Amen? Isn't that good? I feel the anointing all over that one, you know, uh, each one of them. But God said, seek my face. He's saying to you, seek my face. And when he talks to you, Answer him. And so his word is saying, seek my face. And then you look back at the Lord and you say, your face, Lord, I will seek. I'm going to do it. I'm going to seek your face. Hallelujah. I, I wanted to share scriptures of encouragement to let us know that when, when stuff is coming against us, our strength is in the Lord. Our strength is in his word. You know, digging into it and promising his promises, uh, they're true. They're righteous altogether, Psalm 119 goes on, or 27, or one of them. What is it, Dave? <laughs> okay. Several days ago, uh, this is going to get, uh, this was all the, the good stuff, and it's all going to continue to be good, but there's some pain involved in, What's in what's coming because of what we're seeing in, uh, in the world. And uh, several days ago, I listened to a very passionate message from Bishop Robert Stearns. He's the founder and head of Eagle's Wings Ministry in uh, uh, New upstate New York. He's also the bishop at the Tabernacle uh, Church. He travels all around the world, and he's had some... Uh, just amazing influence. Uh, his son said, uh, was giving a report in school, or it was something like, like this. It says, Benjamin Netanyahu is my dad's best friend. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> he says, and he is. He is a friend of, of Benjamin Netanyahu for years. And, and Robert founded a ministry over there. I mean, he's got a number of different things. And you can find him on eagleswings.org. And then he has this, uh, it's called Abraham's Bread. And uh, this is very cool. Abraham's Bread, feeding all the children of Abraham in Israel. Abraham's Bread feeding centers in Jerusalem and Tiberias uh, <clears throat> provide hot meals to hundreds every day who are living in poverty. Jews, Arabs, Christians, all who are in need are welcome to experience God's love as we meet these practical needs. He says it's a nation in need. 1.7 million Israelis, Jew and Arab, live below the poverty line. One out of three children do not even have one hot meal a day. Many elderly Holocaust survivors can't afford basic groceries or are too ill to take care of themselves. Uh, <coughs> new immigrants come uh, to make uh, aliyah, that's become citizens of Israel, with almost no money. Some escaping extreme persecution, poverty, with only the clothes on their backs. And then he's talking about you can make a difference. Now this, as I... I just wanted to give you a little background on this, on this guy and what he's doing. I, I was on a, uh, a live phone call uh, this past week when had this woman there that's 
doing the feeding center over there and saying how horrible it is. They provided, I think, I forget how many beds that so many in Gaza and all of the devastation that's happened because of the war, they have no place to, to sleep. And they're like, they're sleeping on the ground and everything. And so this woman got together the finances and things like that just to get cots for, for these people. She's saying the, the need for food now because of everything that's going on in Israel with this uh, horrible war, uh, she's taking care of uh, as much. And it was so great to be on the, uh, a live call with, uh, with her and with uh, uh, Robert Stearns and, and to hear this kind of thing. And it's heartbreaking to see what people are going through. I think he's been, uh, been there for, uh, I think it's 30 years over, over there. The other thing uh, that I, I wanted to share here that I listened to this pass, passionate message from Robert Stearns. He was by himself. He's in his office. He didn't have his usual crew and people behind him. He's just said unshaven and just so broken over what's happened in Israel and everything that's going on there and, and the misinformation that's going out. And I just want to share with you that, I mean, if you're watching the major networks, you're going to get a tainted view of what's happening. It's going to be colored in a direction that's going to uh, make Israel look terrible. And that's what's happened. Did you see? I mean, I saw uh, a news clip. And this is CBN, that's Christian Broadcasting Network, CBN News. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on your, on your TV. I love that. That's when Pat Robertson founded this thing so many years ago. And... Uh, probably over 40 years ago. But I love that these are Christian people, Christian reporters that report every day on what's happening, day 28, day, it's probably day 30 now, of the war that's going on there with video footage. And it could be like, I, I don't want to see that stuff. I don't either. I don't want to feel what I'm feeling. I'd, I'd rather be numb to all that's going on. I, let me just, I'll just pray, Lord, bless them. Well, sometimes that's just not enough. Sometimes there's a need to, uh, I mean, if, if your loved one was hurting, you wouldn't want somebody to toss up a casual, oh, yeah, God bless them. They'd be like, can you intercede for my child? Can you, can you reach out? Can you go in the depths of your heart to say, I I want to participate in this. I've moved beyond the giving thing. That's something that we just, as God leads us, because we realize there's so many needs out there, but you can only do what you can do, and, so, and that's great. This, when Robert spoke about this, what was going on over there, uh, it, it was, it's just devastating. I'm, uh, obviously, I'm a bit tongue-tied by the horrors of war and what's taking place. But I'm also irate over, I saw something where at a college that was founded for, uh, cri over to make pastors, Christians, to come and learn. And that was Harvard. Did you know Harvard was founded as a Christian College and Princeton and Yale, all Christians started out that way. And they had, I saw the video footage of these Harvard students blocking a Jewish person that was coming, a fellow student, blocking him as though he's the problem. Anti Semitism is off the charts right now. Can I get a witness here? Have you seen it? It's really, it's, it's unbelievable. And and these are people. These are people. I don't care what nationality or, or anything like that, but anti-Semitism, it's really bad. They talk about what happened in, <coughs> in the Gaza Strip and 
<coughs> in Gaza, and all, all that happened there, people are saying, well, let's just have a ceasefire. There's, there's hundreds of people that are prisoners of war that are held captive, and there's a lot of stuff going on. I want to pray that they're going to be set free. Amen? We want to pray that God's going to do something amazing there. Uh, I'm going to zero in on one thing that Robert said. This is not an assault against Jews. He said the real, the real problem here, and this is how, how he put it, that there are demonic strongholds that are pushing an agenda, and when when Hamas came in and did what they did uh, in, in Gaza, and all of the people that died, like uh, one time, I mean thousands of people died, or like 1,400 in, uh, in a day, when, <clears throat> when they did that, some of the atrocities that took place, or I won't, I won't even go into them, but you've heard of them, the things that they've done that are just horrendous. What did you say? Animals don't do that. If an animal's fighting, kills the other animal, that's it. But not to torture and do things that you're like, how is this happening? How, how are people doing that to people? And it's really this. There's a demonic stronghold that has captured the hearts of a radical Islamic... Uh, what do you call it? A radical group. What is it? I need, yeah, there you go. Uh, hey, it's just, it's, it's horrible. Robert says, these people are demonized. They're doing things that this is not, like when they say, they want to wipe out Israel, but it's more than just wiping out. They want to wipe out the Jews. But <laughs> Robert says, it's not just the Jews. This, he says, they're after you, Christians. They're after even just normal people. Anything that they, they can come against because there's this idea they want to wipe out everybody that's not radicalized and becoming uh, this radical Islam nation. And that's why we're seeing all kinds of stuff uh, taking place. I'm sorry, I can't even articulate it uh, properly, but uh, <clears throat> today, I guess we'll do this. Uh, today, November 5th, is the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted. Did you know that? That's every year. And I got some stuff uh, from that. And so they want to set aside this day, a global day of prayer on behalf of Christians who are facing abuse. They launched this over uh, two decades ago, and CBN is uh, talking about this. Uh, and according to Open Doors World Watch list, Last year alone, 5,621 Christians were killed for faith-related reasons. 2,110 churches faced brutal attacks, and 4,542 Christians were unjustly detained. One in seven Christians worldwide currently faces persecution in various forms. One in five Christians are persecuted in Africa, and two in five Christians are persecuted in Asia. That's what Open Doors reported. According to the World Watch list, more than 360 million Christians suffer high levels of persecution and discrimination. We don't get that kind of thing here. We do face some discrimination and things, uh, uh, but nothing like that. And so we can be so insulated from the things that are going on uh, that we don't even realize it. And the number one th thing persecuted Christians ask for is prayer, according to International Christian Concern, ICC, the President Jeff King. So that's what they want, prayer. 
Prayer works. Amen? Not being casual about it, but really praying. Like, like these numbers here. And they say they're offering a resource kit for churches and individuals to lead their faith communities in prayer for the persecuted. Christian persecution remains unreported in the news media and is largely a hidden issue. The average Christian may not even aware of such persecution unless they seek out information on it. And isn't that true? We don't, probably don't think about it at all. And look where we are. We're in a we're able to be here and nobody's shooting at us. Amen. Yeah, praise God. But, but what we can do is we can pray. It says the 2023 report singles out the countries of Nigeria, North Korea, India, and many more. It includes groups like the Allied Democratic Forces, Al-Shabaab, Fulani militants, and a whole bunch of others. The Taliban and uh, different ones I won't even be able to pronounce. So this, we want to pray for God to really move here and that I have just something else I want to share. Uh, <clears throat> I met with Rabbi Avi Korer. Uh, Korer. He's uh, the rabbi of of the Putnam, I, I forget what it's called, but uh, uh, Kabad, uh, what's that? Yeah, yeah, and he's right, in, right in, two doors down from uh, where Paul's thing is, and he he called me up. He was over by our pavilion. He he gave me these. These are kidnapped, twenty-three-year-old Israeli, Alina Plati, whatever it is. On October 7th, more than 200 innocent, innocent civilians were abducted uh, from, their Israel, uh, from Israel into the Gaza Strip. Their whereabouts remain unknown. More than 4,500 women, men, and children ranging uh, from three months to 85 years old were wounded, murdered, beaten, raped, and brutally separated from loved ones by Hamas. He says, would you take some of these? Could you maybe... Give, give them to people that could. It's got a QR code for these people here for just to pay. I'm going to put them uh, in the table in the back. Would you do that for me, Ben? Just stick it on the table back there. And, and <clears throat> it's like wanting to, wanting to be involved, amen? Wanting to make our voice known and, and to really pray we have a lot of joy in our hearts in our church. We have a great loving church. It's not a religious kind of atmosphere. Love the worship today and, and just experiencing that. And we want that. And that's where uh, I, I entitled uh, this message today, uh, The Aerial Perspective or The View from Above. Uh, and that... The good news includes the bad news. Amen? There's, there's some bad news there, and we've heard, heard it this morning, even as I just shared too much information. But I felt like it's got to be said. We have to take it upon ourselves for, you know, watch CBN or, or whatever it is and just saying, hey, I, I need to take time to pray for these people, and you might think, well, who am I? You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to have us pray now. You don't have to stand, but let's have different people pray just as something has touched your heart here, and, uh, and let's just do that, and, uh, and I'll have the worship team come back up. Uh, you can come, come up now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we welcome your presence here. We thank you that we've experienced you as we worshiped you and as our hearts get touched. You're the one that gives us a heart of compassion. 
And then so, Lord, we, we pray that you would not just give us a heart of compassion, but give us uh, some direction in what needs to take place of how we can, how we can touch others, that we'd be sensitive to the things that are going on around us. We pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit would come and touch us and give us a boldness to be Christians that are ready to give an answer of the hope that we have that lies within us to anybody that asks. Say, you seem different. I am different. And let's let God come touch us now, Lord. Open our hearts, our minds, our mouths as we pray to you for these, these issues in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody just launch out. Thank you, Lord. Jesus over them. Jesus, we know that there is nowhere too dark for you to go. Lord, that the darkest place, the deepest valley, that you are there with us. I thank you that you are there now, bringing comfort. Holy Spirit, bring comfort. Holy Spirit, bring peace. And, and we pray for every single one, every single one of those hostages to be released, that they would not be harmed, that they would Angels surround them now. You're the God who shakes prison doors open, makes chains fall off, and we just speak protection around them. Heavenly hosts surround them and protect them, each and every one, each and every one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be afraid to step on, on somebody else's uh, prayer, just popcorn prayer. It doesn't have to be long and just simple things that grab your heart.
Yes, Lord. Lord, we come against the deceptions that the enemy is putting out there, the lies, the foul spirits that are infiltrating weak minds and, and people that, uh, that are lost, these students in <clears throat> Harvard and other universities uh, where they're grabbing a hold of this wrong narrative we pray, Almighty God, we just rebuke the enemy and pray that you're going to uh, work in the lives of individuals. We, we want to set the captives free. Lord, we release your forgiveness over those who have, have uh, just gone down negative paths and maybe don't even like who they've become. And we just release your forgiveness and pray a the strongholds would be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for our government, uh, Lord, that you're going to pour out your spirit and give a spirit of wisdom and revelation to know you better. And Lord, to wake up to this lunacy that's taking place around the globe. Lord, we want the church to rise with power. Let's stand together. We want the church to rise in power and authority to see your word lifted up, your name exalted, and that we'd see signs and wonders following the preaching of the word and the things that people need, Lord God. We pray the release of, uh, of the captives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God Almighty, protect our military, protect our... Uh, <laughs> our ships and everything else in the United States, we pray, Lord God, that you're going to awaken your people. Lord, we prayed for a while, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. Lord, we're asking for forgiveness. We're asking for a change to take place. We pray for our president and vice president and uh, the new speaker of the house. We pray for, for those in the Senate. Lord, hallelujah. Each, <clears throat> each one in, pour out your spirit, Lord God. In the house, in the executive. Hallelujah. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray a release of your spirit over everyone here to hunger and thirst for righteousness, to hunger for being filled with your Holy Spirit and then and getting a quickening within their heart of what needs to be done. Hallelujah. Greater breakthrough greater breakthrough in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap offering of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you all. Love you very much. And uh, just had to plow, plow through there. But you hear the heart. Amen. God bless you.